today. His brother is having some heart issues, so we're going to keep them in our prayers this week. Other than that, I think every um, all the others are still um, on our prayer concerns. There are lots of announcements in your um, hymnals on page 94 for the confession and the forgiveness. So the front part of your hymnal, page 94. We begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the whole of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our worship continues with our first hymn, um, which is number 377, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and glory are His. This is the Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God. Join me in the prayer of the day. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long lies? Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Many are saying, you who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. Be with you. 
they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet and see that it is I. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and then he took it and he ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are the witnesses of these things. The words of our Lord. Praise to you. You may be seated. You have you ever witnessed the living Jesus in person? The living Jesus. This is the situation for the disciples on this very first week. The disciples began in a conversation with the witnesses who have been. Uh, on the road to Emmaus. Those witnesses were so excited, so moved, so beautifully empowered by the conversation, by the love, and by the opening of their minds. And as we read this scripture, we hear and understand what we are reading when the Spirit of the Lord enters and helps us to recognize God's word. Can you imagine if you had witnessed Jesus' death and then were standing in a room, a locked room at that, and you were able to witness Jesus in his presence? Peace be with you. In the presence of the living God, peace. The natural human reaction, of course, to this scenario is to be hallucinating rather than becoming angry that people do not understand what is happening to them. Jesus simply explains things gently, inviting them to touch the scars and the wounds, and then that physical touch is still not enough. Jesus asks for something to eat. This is another form of proving that the body is really involved here. Jesus told the disciples in verses 44 to 48, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to be raised from the dead on the third day. And that repentance of forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed to his, in his name, to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you are all witnesses to this. This is very heavy. The scripture says that he opened the minds to understand the scriptures. This week I kept praying that the Holy Spirit would open my mind. As I studied this text, I wondered about many different things, and I found some information that I thought would be very helpful to me. 
I do that every week, hoping to get a better understanding, hoping that I will get the right information, and then God will just open my mind. Somehow it's just never that easy. So in my studying, there are three things, three components, promises that God in, in, identifies. It's a way for us to work through and understand Christianity. Richard Donovan says that we need to remember the suffering and the death of the Messiah. And then secondly, we have to remember and celebrate the resurrection, the living Son of God. And then third, we are expected to proclaim repentance and forgiveness to all nations. As I read, as I pondered, everything keeps coming back to Jesus. Jesus is speaking to the disciples and to everyone in that locked room, including the two people from the road to Emmaus. God wants us to proclaim a message of repentance, asking for forgiveness of sins. Believe. To those who believe in Jesus as the Messiah, God offers a pardon. God offers forgiveness of our sins, loving grace. And then God expects us to write, uh, God expects us to witness to the Messiah, Jesus. Those who hear, those who who see that Jesus is the Messiah, we need to share God's love. We need to share the joy. We need to share God's plan. So here's the hard part, verse 48. You are witnesses. Matures is the word in Greek, and it's the root word or how we get the word martyr. Died as martyrs for the cause. Witness equals martyr. Are we witnesses? Do we proclaim Christ crucified and risen? And in that proclamation of repentance and forgiveness to all nations, are we willing to be martyrs? How many of us share a story about our faith openly and regularly? As a witness, we need to find a way to share the story of Jesus, the Messiah. We will need to testify to our story, our story of faith our story of how Jesus enters into our lives. And then, your life. And when appropriate, God will be there. Think about this. How has your life, the life of Jesus, entered into your life? How has the story of the Messiah, the story of repentance, and forgiveness changed you or brought life to you. I want to be able to help us think about the different ways that we can share the story of the Messiah. Maybe your way of sharing your faith is to stand up in front of your congregation and share a story. Maybe you are talented enough to write a poem that gets printed or a storyteller that you can tell an insightful story. Maybe your talent writes. Maybe you can paint or draw or sculpt a beautiful piece of artwork. One that shows the witness of Jesus. Maybe you can use a different kind of medium like a fabric in a quilt, or a charcoal, or wood. We have many, many talented people in all four of our congregations. People who have done all of that, 
They have created artwork in fabric, in wood, in paint. They have sung like angels, played musical instruments that make us storytellers. And we have witnessed some of the most amazing people who just fill us with such joy that we can only be directed back to God. The people of Redwood Central Lutheran Parish have been listening to God, sharing in God's given talent, sharing what they have, what they know, and witnessing to the love and the joy and the peace that God makes in their lives. And today we celebrate those witnesses. We wonder about those who have died as martyrs, feeling a loss of not knowing what they could share because the evil had stopped them. The fact remains that God God's love promises to walk with you. In the coming weeks, we'll be celebrating with our ninth graders as they complete their confirmation education. And as we prepare for that day, we'll be working with them on their own faith statements, writing down how their faith has grown and what they will do with what they have learned. We'll be able to hear how the Holy Spirit has changed them and where God is pointing them to go. We use the Apostles' Creed as a step to think about exactly what they believe and what the church teaches about our faith. And one of the there are some uh, ama- there are so many amazing uh, contemporary songs some of which are very deep and some of which are rich in stories. But We Believe is one of those amazing songs to me. We Believe is performed by Newsboys, and part of the lyrics go like this. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation. We believe. In this broken generation, when all is dark, you help us see. There's only one salvation. We believe. We believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion along with Jesus who relies on the Holy Spirit to keep us strong. The song continues, so let our faith be more than anthems, greater than the songs we sing. And in our weakness and temptation, we believe, we believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and he's coming back again. Be raised. In the here and now, Let love invade. Let the church live loud. Our God will say, we believe. Know that my life is much better when I take it first to the Lord. And so for me, Alison Krause's song, The Living Prayer, says what I need to say. Will you please join me in prayer? In these trials of life, I find another voice inside my mind. He comforts me and bids me live inside the love the 
Father gives. In your love, I find relief, a haven from my disbelief. Take my life and let me be a living prayer, my God, to thee. Take my life and let me be a living prayer, my God, to thee. Amen. Our next hymn is number 579, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God. You proclaim the blessings of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O God. You direct the nations, O God, guide all in authority, that they shepherd their people in ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Today, Lord, we pray for Bishop John Anderson and our Synod staff as they transition out and begin the process of electing a new bishop. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of all others. Today we pray for Tom Lang, Audrey Sondrell, Larry Parker, Tessa Tilgus, Sharon Trulock, Darla Willey, Peggy Schley, Bernice Steffen, Leslie Sagadal, Alan Palmer, Cindy Peterson, Glenn Bach, Judy Tindalen, Julie Brocky. Announce your being suffering or afraid. Hear us, O oh God. You give us fellowship with one another in this faith community, and we ask that you be among the leaders of Redwood Central Lutheran Parish as they begin the call process to look for another pastor here. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we may live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O oh God. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and the gifts of those for Michael Wesley Anderson and for Wade Gregory Joseph Torkey as they await their baptism. Unite us with them in the resurrection hope. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of a new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our lives and the gifts that we offer, abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved Christ, Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our joy and our duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and the sea and all creation, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, 
We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. This time you can separate the pieces of communion, the little foil thing, or the little cellophane first to get the wafer, and then the foil for the grape juice. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Please join me in the prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. You may be seated. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son. Um, We will sing. Oh, I get to do my blessing. Love you to watch over, within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll sing our sending hymn number.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia.